This song is for those who struggle with the calling and the purpose God has upon your life. I encourage you to surrender all to Christ and say yes to His will. Here's my story. Searching for answers, needing solutions, fighting the obvious call on my life, on my life, following my purpose. (laughs) Hello to each of you and welcome to another episode of Jamming with the Maestro, an inspirational gospel radio show sponsored by the Lewis Chapel Missionary Baptist Church Network. I am your host, songwriter, recording artist, and minister of music, Will Harris. Listen, during the month of February, we are celebrating the accomplishments of our HBCU choir directors, and we have a very exciting show for you today. But before we get started, go ahead and click like and share this broadcast with someone. If you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to us so that you never miss an episode of Jamming with the Maestro. Before we jump into our episode today, I always like to do a little gospel music trivia. Well, today it's just music trivia. Well, today, actually, it's HBCU trivia. (laughs) And I want to start off with something. Uh, This well-known historically black college was founded in 1867. Gospel artist Richard Smallwood, actress Felicia Rashad, and our current Vice President of the United States of America, Kamala Harris, are graduates of this illustrious university. What university am I speaking of? I hope you guessed Howard University in Washington, D.C. I hope you guessed Howard University. I'm going to share one more with you, and then we're going to jump into our show. This historically black college was founded in 1866. It is the oldest HBCU in the state of Mississippi. Famous hymn writer Lucy Campbell and yours truly are graduates of this illustrious university. What college am I speaking of? I hope you guessed Rust College in Holly Springs, Mississippi. Rust College. Listen, we are so blessed today to have in our midst Dr. Denise Payton. She hails from Spring Lake, North Carolina. She's a singer, choir director, workshop clinician, and author, and the list goes on and on and on. Dr. Payton has studied at North Carolina A&T University, University of North Carolina at Greensboro, Fayetteville State University, Boston University, and Walden University. She is presently the Director of Choral Activities at Fayetteville State University. Will you help me welcome my friend, Dr. Denise Payton. How are you doing, Dr. Payton? I am doing well, and thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity to come and share. Thank you so much. I know it's kind of late. We, we tape at 8 o'clock at night, and she's had a long day, so I thank you for uh, coming to share with us tonight. It's truly a blessing. Well, you are a blessing to the community, and as I said, you're paying it forward, and I appreciate that very much. Thank you. I want to start off with how I was introduced to you. So when I first moved to this area, I didn't know many people, and I think the very first year I came here, WIDU was having a gospel concert or something, and so one of the very first persons I met was, um, I believe, Rodney Raines and Michael Ross and you know Becky White and all of the gospel artists, and they began to tell me about the work you had done over the years at Bethel. And how your church choir was phenomenal back in the day. You all would have these choir concerts and choir anniversaries. And I said, well, I've got to meet her. And so actually, I ended up meeting your daughter before I met you, yes. Jere. But it has been such a blessing uh, to know you. Um, I'm so honored to have you tonight and to just talk about um, the HBCU experience and what you've done over there at Federal State University. Um, I want to start off with telling us where you're from. and How did you get your start in music? Well, I never let anyone say that I am from Fayetteville because I am from Spring Lake, North Carolina, formerly known as Manchester. Okay. Uh, I have been doing music probably since I could speak, but I know my first solo, I was five years old, and WIDU came out to Manchester Elementary School, and I sang the Lord's Prayer. And how old were you? Five. And you sang the Lord's Prayer? I sang the Lord's Prayer. (laughs) 
<laughs> how Let's well, how how well I did it, I don't know, but, uh, you know, this was a time of segregated schools, and so my first cousin happened to be the principal mm. at Manchester Elementary School, and he knew that I sang, so that's how it started. Mm. Um, I always loved music. I'm going to share something with you mm -hmm. and your um, audience mm -hmm. that many people don't know. Mm -hmm. Unless you read my book. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to, my brothers and sisters, which I am the youngest of, used to tell me that I couldn't sing. Mm -hmm. And they would tell mom and dad to tell me to hush because mm -hmm. I was messing them up. Mm -hmm. And I tearfully told them, that's okay, because one day I'm going to sing better than all of y'all. <laughs> I love it. And God said, so let it be done. Mm. And uh, so that is my uh, claim to fame. Mm. But um, we were not rich. Mm -hmm. I'm not the product of someone who had private lessons prior to going to college. I taught myself how to read music. I practiced all the time, singing, singing, singing. My high school director didn't quite recognize and understand, I think, because my voice was very different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I sang in my church, everyone else sang a certain way, and mine had a different timbre. Mm -hmm. And everyone would always look back and, who is that mm -hmm. singing like that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so... Mm -hmm. My father said, I don't, you're going to have to go to Fayetteville State. And I said, no, Daddy, I'm going to A&T. Mm. And he said, I, I don't know whether I can send you to a and I said, it's okay. I did an audition and I got a full scholarship. Mm. <laughs> and uh, that's how all of the formal okay. education of music mm. began. But mm. I can't remember a time that... Um, I wasn't singing. Singing to me is healing. Mm. Singing to me, uh, we all have our go-to song, mm -hmm. if we're honest about it. And so um, that's that's really where it worked. Mm -hmm. So that was 1975 wow. when I started at A&T. Kim, let me ask you this. Because you had not had formal training, when you got to college, did you feel like you had to work harder? Was it harder for you? Um, or you just naturally had it, you caught it. The singing was very easy. Mm -hmm. The theory was not. <laughs> That's most of our stories, yes. <laughs> the theory was not. Mm -hmm. But then whenever I was able to actually learn theory and transfer that to that choral page, mm -hmm. then I felt very good. But my freshman year... I was selected to sing the role of the mother in the opera of Mall and the Night Visitors. Okay, I'm very and familiar. I just had gotten to A and T, and I was Denise Murchison, mm -hmm. and I was 17 years old when I went to college. And uh, so, you know, I was kind of the talk of Fraser Hall. That girl came all the way up from this little town, you know. And, uh, so let's just say I had many opportunities. Uh, many doors opened, uh, many competitions won. Um, I was like the university soloist, mm. sang for everything, even sang for my commencement. Mm. I was the only graduate uh, in my uh, in the choir, mm. so I'm standing up there in my cap and gown, right by myself. Mm. You know, singing Ride the Chariot. I was going to ask you, what did you sing? Okay. Ride the Chariot. At your graduation. Wow. At my wow. Yes. So your work speaks for itself. It, it really does. You you are very well known and respected in this community. Every time I turn around, Dr. Payton is lecturing. She's singing somewhere. She's not slowing down, you all. As a classically trained singer and having roots in black gospel music, has it been challenging to merge those two together? It really has not been challenging to merge them together. Mm -hmm. The challenge is the perception of your audience. Mm. That's where the challenge comes. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that as a vocalist, 
you have several different voices mm -hmm. and you have to know which voice to use with which genre. Mm -hmm. And uh, I often, this is one thing that I say and anyone who's listening knows they've heard me say it before, mm -hmm. learn to sing everything mm -hmm. so that if someone calls and they need Ave Maria, you can do that. Mm -hmm. But if they want, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. And then if they need an, uh, something from an oratorio, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. Now, this is no hit on gospel singers, mm -hmm. but gospel singers are almost on every corner mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that look like us. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you something. And when I go into a church to perform, mm -hmm. the first thing they think is I'm going to have a tambourine <laughs> and, you sing some and I'm going to sing some gospel. Mm -hmm. And I turn around and it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, well, what kind of singing is she doing? <laughs> um, so I had to learn to appreciate the gift that God gave me. It was different, but it was okay that it was different. Absolutely. And I think that that's one of the things uh, I've never tried to fit in. Mm. I can't do the vocal runs mm -hmm. unless they're written on the music. Mm. <laughs> if it's handled, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I can read the notes and I can do that. But mm -hmm. I don't try to imitate anyone. I don't try to take anyone's song and sing it like them. I do all of my singing the way I feel it the way it fits Denise. Mm -hmm. And uh, that goes for popular music because I sing all genres. Mm -hmm. Because I sing for different occasions, weddings and anniversaries, church anniversaries, you know, retirement celebrations. And that calls for so much literature. Mm -hmm. And if you're just hooked into one genre, you can't take those jobs. You can't, you can't uh, thrive. Um, so far as presentations, I like to, I have done a lot of study in African American music and the beginnings of it and how it was uh, the foundation for everything that we mm -hmm. have today. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and how many of the genres were not accepted at the time that they appeared uh, or the time that they came on the scene because even the rap music that they sing today, it wasn't accepted at first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you have to uh, keep going because change in music is difficult for people. That's true. That is absolutely change true. Change <laughs> is difficult. You know, if they uh, we never done it this way. Mm -hmm. So you know, and I'm saying, well, just just try it. Mm -hmm. I, I think you might like it. So mm -hmm. I have an open mind when it comes to. But I like to go on a journey. If there's a singer singing for me. I want to be transported with that singer. So when I sing something, I try to take the audience on the journey. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I love it. I love, it. and I and, and just to piggyback off of what you were saying, everything is not for everybody. My gift may not, but as long as I'm reaching somebody, it's okay. It's okay. So you stepped into the role of choir director at FSU, filled some pretty large shoes. Dr. Marvin Curtis was, yes. was wonderful. And you set the bar pretty high, Dr. Payton. <laughs> As we celebrate Black History Month, let's take a look at the Fayetteville State University Concert Choir performing way over in Beulah Land. And this arrangement is by Stacy Gibbs. <laughs> Oh, no. 
The Negro Spiritualism, beautiful art form made popular in America by the Fist Jubilee Singers. By the way, I love the Fist Jubilee Singers. How important is it for you to include spirituals in, in your choir's repertoire? Well, I'm very adamant about using the spiritual and, and singing the spiritual, but I go a little bit uh, farther back than Fisk Jubilee mm -hmm. when I talk about the folk spiritual, mm -hmm. the ones that were sung out in the fields, mm -hmm. and uh, how they eventually became the spirituals we sing and work songs mm -hmm. to take the monotony out of work. But when we get to the concert arranged spirituals, that's when you get to mm -hmm. those jubilees. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, Harry T. Burley was the first composer to write the spiritual for the solo voice. Mm -hmm. But he got a lot of grief about that from those in the Harlem Renaissance, mm -hmm. like Langston Hughes and Sir O'Neill Hurston. They said that he took all of the emotion and the feeling out of it, out of it mm -hmm. to make the music accessible for anyone to sing, yet, with that said, Burley's high voice and low voice are still in my studio. <laughs> and we still utilize those songs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The spirituals are moving, and there are three different types. Of course, we have the jubilees, which are happy. Mm -hmm. We have the sorrow songs, where there is some sort of struggle. And then we have the coded messages, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. um, Master always figured, you know, yeah, they're just loving to sing and didn't realize this is how I'm telling you and communicating with you. Same as with drums, same as with braids, braided hair, hmm. because braided hair was like a map. Hmm. They didn't realize that, but, you know, they braided their hair a certain way. Hmm. But I will say, people always want to bring up Amazing Grace when you talk about uh, spiritual. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will give John Newton the credit of writing the mm -hmm. lyrics, but he heard that melody when he brought the women to the slave ship. Mm -hmm. If you look at that song and you look at the music, it says, the arranger, unknown. Hmm. If you look in your hymn book, it says, unknown. unknown. So the spiritual has its place. Mm -hmm. As an HBCU, I am so adamant about doing spirituals because if we don't sing our music, who's going to sing it? Absolutely. Who's going to sing it? And then... How many of us, even doesn't matter what race or ethnicity you are, if it's a sorrow song, I'm sure you can emote that. Mm -hmm. If it's a jubilee, you should be able to emote that. What do I mean by that? I mean taking the audience on this journey. If you're stealing away and you're stealing away to Jesus, somehow or another, I should feel a tugging. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, the lyrics of songs are as important as the melody. And I'm always striving for my students. I said, what does it mean? It's difficult for them to voice what it means. Mm -hmm. And then when I talk about the conditions, then, ah, there's a connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fist Jubilee singers were, were wonderful, but they, they had to perform under some very difficult circumstances mm -hmm. and being cold and being hungry and people getting sick, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they were able to bring that money back to Fisk mm -hmm. and to, to do what was necessary. Mm -hmm. So so yes, there are an ideal group uh, mm -hmm. to do it, but mm -hmm. we make sure that the spirituals are a part of the repertoire. That, that is do. awesome, that is awesome. That is, you. that is awesome. Your children, <laughs> Jeray and Jared, are both phenomenal artists in their own right. Jeray is classically trained. She's been on several of my, my albums. Jared has his own choir and, and directs several choirs here in the city. How does it make you feel when you see your children following in your footsteps? Well, that happened naturally, I think. Uh, if you would talk to my children, they would say, They've been going to choir rehearsals since they cried in the world. Mm -hmm. 
I cannot tell you how many laps my children have sat in for me to go up and sing or I the direct choir. <laughs> Whoever was sitting on the first pew, <laughs> would you hold my baby? Mm -hmm. They would hold my baby. Mm -hmm. Now that I see their growth and the joy, I can't even put it into words. I am so immensely proud mm. of my children. Mm -hmm. um, I did not think that their love for music was going to be like mine, but they do all the genres. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not stuck in one. Mm -hmm. Jared is finding his classical voice now, mm -hmm. and it's just doing amazing work. Mm -hmm. Jare graduated from the School of the Arts, which is the Music Conservatory of North Carolina, and she was the only black vocal major. Mm -hmm. at that particular time. Mm -hmm. So I swell with pride. Uh, I'm a very proud mother. Beautiful. And uh, I know I share that on social media and everywhere else. Um, but And it's something we can do together. Mm -hmm. When I sing with my children, my heart is just full. You know, the tears are almost ready to roll down mm -hmm. because, look, you're doing this with your children. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. out of all the things that I, and they can cook too, so, okay. <laughs> you know, and they can maintain and take care of themselves. But music, my tagline for the Peyton family is that's a family business. The family business. <laughs> Love it. Love it. One of the ensembles that you founded at, at Fayetteville State uh, is a female ensemble called Main Attraction. Tell us about Main Attraction. How did you come up with that? Well, when I got to Fayetteville State, I want to wind back just a little bit, okay. tell you just a little bit of that history. When Dr. Curtis was at Fayetteville State, he utilized me as his soprano soloist. Hmm. So I traveled to France and Belgium, Canada, sang with the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra, all with Dr. Marvin Curtis. Hmm. And when Dr. Curtis said, Denise, I am leaving. And I said, no. And he said, but I think you're the best one to take my place. Mm. I was teaching at Spring Lake Middle School where I had been since 1990. Mm. And this was 2008. And he said, aren't you tired of teaching middle school? And I said, yeah, but I only have two years to retire. He says, well, I think you would be the best one to take my place. That's how I got to Fayetteville State. Mm was by my dear friend, Marvin Curtis, who recommended me for the job. Wow. So when I got there, and the kids were, they knew me already. Mm -hmm. So I had like 71 kids in choir. And everyone was saying, oh, can you bring them over here to sing? Can you bring? And I said, I've got to make some smaller ensembles because I can't take 70 kids every time, you know, if, if they're just doing a small reception in the chancellor's dining room or they're just doing this, I need a small group. Mm. Well, you know, we're the Broncos and it's the horse's mane. So I spelled it M-A-N-E, attraction. And I started out main attraction, I had nine girls. But when main attraction really came into being, I had four to five voices that are extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And that's Tamani A.G. Boyce, mm -hmm. Alicia Small, mm -hmm. Shireen Stone, Jerrica Edwards, mm -hmm. Loretta Somerville. Mm -hmm. These are voices that are heavenly still today. Mm -hmm. And I still consider them my children, my girls. But they put us on the map. They put us on the map where people were just clamoring. And then after I did main attraction, the guy said, that's not fair. We need something. <laughs> and so I started Men of Distinction. Mm. And But I made the Men of Distinction do all and mm. temptations and things. Mm -hmm. So they're a big hit at homecoming. Mm -hmm. for those things because, you know, if you get up and sing My Girl to the Queens, the former Queens of Fayetteville State, that's always a hit. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, but Main Attraction wow. are uh, just a phenomenal signature group.
but uh, I spelled it, it gets spelled all kinds of ways. And I said, but see, the, the reasoning behind that was because we were the Broncos and that was the main, you know. And uh, so I, I love those girls and uh, Aaliyah Lambert. And I could just go on and on because I have just been very, very blessed to find girls. And I did not teach those girls songs. I gave them ideas mm -hmm. and they went into the practice room and worked out their harmonies <laughs> let's let's hear main attraction work out these harmonies <laughs> ladies and gentlemen main attraction
Um, Brittany Thompson. Brittany Thompson is a phenomenal singer. A lot of these singers that, that came through her has been, they're a part of my albums, have been a part of my choirs. You know, all of them are phenomenal. Let's talk real quick, we're running out of time. What happens next with Dr. Denise Payton? Well, of course, uh, whereas you and I know that we can celebrate Black History 365, 52, 24, 7, this month has been designated. So, Babel State Concert Choir will be uh, singing uh, for John Wesley Church on February 13th. That's their FSU day. Mm. We'll be singing for various um, programs that happen on campus. We're still doing things virtually, um, but we do have singers' masks, which have given us some sort of uh, protection. Mm. And... um, I'm real pleased to say I don't have a very large choir, but I have a choir full of singers. That's great. During the the height of the pandemic, I went down to eight. Mm. Can you imagine having 71, having 40 on a regular, and then to get down to eight? So the pandemic has affected all of us, Mm -hmm. church singers, uh, Mm -hmm. university singers, everyone. Mm-hmm. And everyone hates the mask, but you just have to protect yourself mm-hmm. because you have something, you have to catch the droplets. But mm-hmm. I will be at Cleveland High School, um, I believe it's February 17th, uh, and I'm going to be talking to those students about African American music. And then Cumberland Choral Arts is sponsoring what we call Leave Us, Lift Every Voice and Sing. And um, so I'm one of the featured soloists there. The concert choir is going to open that up with the song Yukutula, which is a prayer for peace. It's a Zulu gospel song. Mm. And uh, it's going to feature Corey Lee, Ken Monique, uh, Butler McLeod, Brenda Vanderford, uh, some spoken word. And this year we're branching out just a little bit. We're doing, of course, art songs and classical music. We're doing spirituals, but we're also going to do Motown. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're in. We always end our concert with Dr. Roland Carter's arrangement of "Lift Every Voice." Oh well, I will be in the house. Uh, I believe you can go to Eventbrite.com get your tickets for this. Um, I will be in the house. I'm so excited to witness this amazing concert. Um, as we end today's show, I want to I want you to tell our listening audience how we can reach you, your social media, um, how we can book you. Well, <laughs> I think probably every student uh, uh, in uh, at Fayetteville State has my uh, cell phone number, but mm-hmm. you can find me on Facebook simply by my name, mm-hmm. Denise Murchison Payton. Mm-hmm. If you're interested in Fayetteville State Concert Choir on Facebook, it is Fayetteville State Concert Choir. Instagram is Faye State Concert Choir. Mm. And Twitter is at FSU Concert Choir. Love and that. my Instagram is Dr. Underscore DM Payton. And that's with an A P A Y T O N. But it has been my pleasure. I could sit here all night <laughs> and uh, talk about music, mm-hmm. which I love and it's healing and Mm -hmm. to make music is wonderful. I want to thank you, Will, for inviting me to be one of your first guests for this jamming with the HBCU directors. I happen to be the president of the Intercollegiate Music Association. And so that recognizes HBCUs in South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, and in the Maryland area. It's wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. I mean, I tell you, you've given us so much information, so many nuggets to take back with us. Um, I want to end today's show with a surprise for you. Okay. You don't know what we're getting ready to play, but I want to uh, just showcase um, uh, one of your beautiful children. Okay. <laughs> Jeray is a phenomenal oh. singer, and so we're going to end today's show. Jeray, I invited Jeray here a few years ago, and she sang with our Millennium Choir, and she did a very familiar piece, um, uh, Order My Steps. Ah. And so we will end today's show. But before we end today's show, I want to just remind you again that this show is sponsored by the Lewis Chapel Missionary Baptist Church Network. And here at Lewis Chapel, we are unapologetically Christian, and we believe that you belong here. Thank you for watching, and enjoy our Millennium Choir featuring 
Dr. Payton's daughter, Jeray Payton. <laughs>